Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit hole, and welcome to my third installment of the many active ingredient serums series. Today, we are talking all about BHA serums. So really quickly, what is BHA? Typically, you are talking about salicylic acid, although you could be talking about a few other forms, including willow bark. Willow bark is not going to be as active as salicylic acid, but it does still have anti-inflammatory properties. BHA is going to be a fantastic ingredient if you're somebody dealing with whiteheads and blackheads. Let me make sure to say on this note that uh, if you do deal with more severe forms of acne, which I have in the past, I've dealt with cystic acne, sometimes still do, please know that pretty much any skincare products you apply over open wounds, including cystic acne, are probably going to hurt. So this could be a difficult category depending on your acne type, and this is why if you do deal with acne, the best place to start will always be with the dermatologist. BHA is indeed different from AHA, and not just because it sounds like a subpar laugh, but because it actually... <laughs> I got myself on that one. It actually does exfoliate your skin in a completely different way. It is an oil-soluble versus water-soluble mechanism that penetrates into the hair follicle. However, in today's video, I am still going to include some products with AHAs that I still do use and recommend, but they will also all have some amount of BHA in them. So that's the two categories. We have timestamps, we have links to products in the description box below. And much like in yesterday's video, I do have some empties in today's video. In fact, I'm not going to do swatches at all today. The first take I did of this video did include swatches and I realized every single product in this video looks the same on camera. They all look like clear gels. But they do feel a little different, especially that new The Ordinary Salicylic Acid. Woo, that one is different. So instead, I'm just going to share my experience with these products and also focus on the active ingredients that they contain. Let's go ahead and get into it. So we are going to start out with BHA serums, that is salicylic acid. Interestingly, every one of these four serums here is at 2% salicylic acid, and yet they are all a little bit different. And since we do have a pretty small selection of serums in this video, I'm just going to go ahead and pick out my fancy favorite and my affordable fragrance. Everything's fragrance free. My affordable favorite and fancy favorite. Uh, quick disclosure, the Geek and Gorgeous Perfectly Clear was gifted to me and I purchased the rest of these products. Okay, so uh, let's start with my affordable favorite here. Now, you might think I'm going to grab the Geek and Gorgeous Perfectly Clear, but I'm actually going to surprise you. I've been listening to your feedback. A lot of you have said, well, it's affordable, but I have to spend a lot to hit the free shipping minimum. So, I understand that. I am going to go with the Inky Lists Beta Hydroxy Acid as my fancy, uh, excuse me, as my affordable favorite. Uh, I'm also going to tell you this is an empty, but I don't see myself repurchasing it. And yet, if, oh goodness, how many of those bottles have I bought? Uh, four or five. You see, we have a bit of a, a story that took place with 2% salicylic acid serums, and that would be The Ordinary originally had a salicylic acid at 2%. They discontinued it, what was that, I think two or three years ago? And so everybody who loved that product had to find an alternative, and that's where the inky list stepped in. Now, I'm going to say an unpopular opinion on apparently uh, YouTube spaces, and that is, uh, it seems like people on YouTube say, well, the inky list is always better than the ordinary. I do not agree with that. I think the opposite. The Ordinary, to me, has been a very reliable brand, even if I don't love every product of theirs. There is no question in my mind that when they tell you a product contains an active at a certain percentage, that is going to be accurate. I haven't always felt that way with the Inky List. Some of you know about my experience with their supposed retinol at 1%. I just don't feel it's a retinol product at 1%. I've tried other 1% retinols. It's not as strong for me. But I do think this is a good product. It is formulated well. It contains a little bit of added hyaluronic acid, which makes it have a, a more, a slightly more thick consistency to it, which does increase its cosmetic elegance. It really does. So overall, it's a good product, even if the Inky List is not my absolute favorite brand. Now, in my fancy favorite, the Tula 
Clear It Up Acne Clearing and Tone Correcting Gel. I have strayed from this in the past and I just continue to come right back to it. I do think, for me at least, this has been the most effective at helping me to prevent my acne. I wanted to show you something interesting with that product in particular. So you see how that says acne clearing and tone correcting? They're actually making a, an acne claim on the packaging here. When a product makes a claim on acne, it has to go through more regulations than a product just saying 2% salicylic acid. So if we look at the box here, you see in this category right here, which I'm not gonna say on YouTube because YouTube is funny, we have the active ingredients panel where you have to legally disclose the percentage of your acne treatment. I'm not sure how this works in every country, I can only speak to the US, but I wanted to make sure to mention this because 2% salicylic acid is the maximum level that can be used in a product claiming it is for acne. I've seen some questions about, well, can you have a higher percentage? Yes, you can, Paula's Choice does it, but at that point you can't claim it's an acne treatment because it would be something else. This one is also a little bit more thick of a product. I know they're saying it's a gel, but I would absolutely say it's a serum. As far as why it stands out to me, the first reason is because it actually does include some azelaic acid. On its own, azelaic acid was not a favorite ingredient for me. You're not gonna see a video dedicated to azelaic acid, and yet, in this product, it does seem to really help to reduce redness, and that's of course what azelaic acid is supposed to do. I'm guessing that it's because my, my skin concerns go in this order. Acne first, followed by redness from the acne. I think that might explain why azelaic wasn't a favorite. Maybe if you have redness before acne, it might be exactly inverted for you, but that, that's how it was for me. And in addition, we have probiotic ingredients, we have some niacinamide, we have zinc, we have calming ingredients, we have a little bit of lactic acid in here. It's, a, it's actually a great formula. And when you look at the price tag of that, it's not that bad. You, you see why I've decided to stop purchasing this and stick with this. It's, it's not even really that big of a price difference. So for me, that's gonna be my favorite. Now again, it's still maybe expensive for some people, so I wanna always have the more affordable options, but I, I do think that Tula product is absolutely wonderful. Um, let's actually talk about the Ordinary first over here. So I've said throughout this series, I haven't wanted to include a lot of products that are new to me. This is new to me because it's a brand new release. The Salicylic Acid 2% Anhydrous Solution. So basically think of it as I'm not really ranking this, I just wanted to make sure to tell you about how it's been so far. It's an interesting release, it really is, because unlike every other product in this video, this is in a base of squalane. But this also surprises me, because while I have dry skin and acne, that's not the most common combination. Very few people share my skin type. And so I was actually quite excited to see squalane as the base of that formula, but it makes me wonder, are people with more oily skin going to like that as much? Because yes, it does feel oily. Now squalene is a lighter oil, it doesn't feel too heavy on your skin, but it does feel oily. So what I'll do with this is I'll make sure to give you some more uh, updated thoughts. I'll probably dedicate a video to this because I've waited for it for so long. I've waited for that product for so, so long and I'm just so happy it's here and look at that price tag. It's, that's, ugh, I love The Ordinary. And then finally, the Geek & Gorgeous Perfectly Clear 2% Salicylic Acid Serum. This one feels the most like the old, the Ordinary Salicylic Acid Serum, which I, I will say I never had any irritation from. I know some people did, but I, I never did. I thought it was a great product. Granted, if I was having a bad breakout, this is not the category I would choose from. We'll show you that in the, in the next portion of this video. But yeah, it, it was always fine for me. Again, if you're making a big Geek & Gorgeous order and you typically use products like this, you might want to throw this in your cart. It's very affordable. It's extremely well done. It's simple. It's another simple product, but yes, in my opinion, it does work. And my second category for today's video are the combination chemical exfoliant serums. These are all products that contain multiple forms of exfoliants, sort of. The Versed is a little different. In fact, let's just go ahead and start this video talking about the Versed Just Breathe Clarifying Serum. So, in the last section, I just said when my skin is having a more intense breakout, I do not opt for a 2% salicylic acid serum. 
This is specifically the product that I go for. Now you'll notice I have the small size here, the 0.5 fluid ounce size. For two years in a row, I've purchased their holiday set, which contains this size. I think it is perfect. I don't typically need this product too often, but when I need it, I need it. And I'm so happy to have it. So why am I raving about this little product here? Basically, it's because this is a product that contains low amounts of chemical exfoliants. So we have 0.2% willow bark in here. We have 1% niacinamide, 1% zinc, some amount of salicylic acid in this product. See, the interesting thing to me about Versed as a brand is that they do have low levels of actives but they disclose that. I think it's wonderful to see because there's so many brands out there that also have low levels of active ingredients, but they don't wanna disclose it. They don't wanna disclose it because a lot of people do believe that more is better. And I feel like brands just end up reinforcing that by not disclosing. It just ends up feeling like this, this loop of people not making progress in terms of understanding that sometimes you don't want a lot of your active ingredients. So I'm just so happy to see Versed out here offering products for sensitive skin, products for beginners, and also in my case, products for when you have a difficult skin type that is acting up. I think they're wonderful. It's not gonna be uh, one of my favorite products here, but it's again, it's a product I, I will always keep around because sometimes I need it. The Pixie Clarity Concentrate here, I see I'm not going in order for this section, but I, I will of course tell you about my favorites. So Pixie, what an interesting journey Pixie has had. Several years ago, Pixie was known for being this brand that you know had more affordable options at the time. <laughs> It's funny because now they're a more expensive brand, but that was affordable a few years ago. I, I, I know, it's mind blowing. But they also absolutely used fragrance in their products and they did not disclose percentages. This led to a lot of speculation in uh, the skincare spaces. It was a very interesting time. But anyway, Pixie has evolved a little bit. The Clarity line does not have any kind of uh, fragrance in it. However, they're still not ready to tell us the percentage of their actives as Versed has done. I, I kind of suspect it might be lower, but you know, again, that's just me suspecting. I cannot know unless a brand actually discloses. I am just throwing a guess out there. So this contains glycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid, and also some extracts. So that is worth noting, rosemary and thyme extract. Uh, I don't think I'll repurchase it. It's just kind of expensive for, uh, you know, a product that's not telling me what's going on in it. It, it. It's such a shame because if they were to tell me, maybe it compares to Versed, but I don't know. And I need to know that in order to make educated uh, choices in terms of my own skincare routine, right? So let's actually switch things up here. I do want to talk about favorites next. I think it's fairly uh, easy to figure that out due to the process of elimination here. So my affordable favorite is indeed the Good Molecules Overnight Exfoliating Treatment. Now that's a product that contains AHA and BHA. We have a 10% blend that includes glycolic acid, lactic acid, and salicylic acid. And look at the price point on that. Absolutely phenomenal. Good Molecules is very good at incredible price points. This is a funny story too though, because I do remember when this product originally had essential oil ingredients, but see, Good Molecules listened to customer feedback. They reformulated and wow, they are, see, you know, that's the thing. If you ask me at this point, I would say, uh, who's better than the ordinary? For me personally, Good Molecules. Although granted, they do tend to make more gentle products than the ordinary. And I think that, I think that could really explain why someone gravitates towards a certain brand as opposed to another brand. Oh, I almost forgot to disclose this one. The Medicube Zero Pore One Day Serum. Yes, that was gifted by the brand. I actually did a sponsored video on that product because as you can guess, it is my fancy favorite in this category. Medicube is the only skincare brand that has actually approached me with a sponsorship in the correct way, in my opinion. I've had a lot of companies email me, hey, can we sponsor you to make a review saying this product is great and it's a product that you, you know, haven't tried? I kick into teacher mode and reply back, I don't know, can you make them reply back in frustration? Uh, may we? 
in all seriousness, I like what Medicube did. They reached out to me and said, hey, can we send you a bunch of products and sponsor reviews on the products that you liked the most? Uh, that's the right way to do things. I just always wanna make sure that I'm really giving you my honest opinion about products, even if it is a sponsored video. So today's video is not sponsored, but yes, this absolutely is a favorite product for me. It's also kind of rare to see this sort of disclosure or even percentages coming from a Korean beauty brand. This is a 15.2% AHA, BHA, and PHA serum and they do disclose each one of those ingredients individually. 14% PHA, 1% AHA, and 0.2% BHA, plus some added niacinamide at 2%. These are all fantastic levels if you ask me. Now that PHA at 14% may sound really high, but PHA is a different ingredient. It's a larger molecule, it exfoliates the surface of your skin more, so it doesn't penetrate as deeply and it tends to not feel as intense which is fantastic for my, you know, a little bit more sensitive skin type. 1% AHA, that's great. I don't actually need a lot of that. Now, I don't rely on this as my BHA serum, but I do love the formula. Again, while all of these are clear serums, this one has a little bit more of a thick texture to it, which does mean it has a little bit more cosmetic elegance. So again, while you are paying a bit more, you are getting a bit more, in my opinion, through that product. And Medicube is finally offering discount codes, so if you are interested, I'll make sure to link mine in the description box below. But yeah, I, uh, that serum absolutely impressed me. And that is all I have for today's video. As always, feel free to share your experience in the comments section below. Let us know if you use BHA products or if you do not. No video tomorrow. I need to catch up on sleep. I don't know if you can tell I'm pretty tired. These videos have been more of a time investment than I initially thought they would be. But we'll be back on Friday with ranking Korean serums. I'm excited for that one. Thank you all again so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.